So if we're continuing on the path of looking at the problems and converting them to solutions or using them to trigger your mind into coming up with solutions, I'm getting better at, uh, at doing that. And I thought of something that might be cool to talk about here. And it's a topic that's come up on this, this podcast a couple of times. It's like um, how much people talk about how the internet ruined graffiti or social media ruined graffiti and things like that. So I thought it might be an easy one to throw out, not so much solutions to that problem. And I, I don't know that I agree with that. I mean, I know social media and the internet have their negativities, but I don't think that it ruined graffiti. But let's just uh, throw out some some positive things that we can do using the internet, using social media. And um, these are things that can not only improve you, but it could also improve the graph culture. So let's say you're a new writer and you're trying to figure out how to how to navigate the scene. And I get messages online sometimes and it's like pretty vague questions like, hey, I'm getting into getting into graph. Can you got any pointers? And it's like, whoa, that's like it's a hard question to answer. It's there's there's three thousand different pointers. It's like you, what what do you what are you asking specifically? So I thought maybe I could come up with some ideas on uh, ways to navigate this. So let's say you're a new writer, or this could also apply if you're moving to a new city or a new state or something. So here's what you can do. Here, here's something that I think you could do to, uh, to utilize the internet and leverage it for uh, pos- something positive. So first thing I would do if I was a new writer, or if I was moving to a new city or a new state, I would go on Instagram, I'd search for the hashtag of the, of my city. So let's say I was moving to, uh, Tucson, Arizona. Um, what I would do is, is search for Tucson graffiti and I'd follow that hashtag and I'd follow other hashtags that lead me to more graffiti that's being done in Tucson, um, more graffiti that's being done in, in surrounding areas. I would look at the posts that are being made there and start to get an idea of who the writers are in that area that are active on social media I would follow them. I would start engaging in their content by liking their stuff, commenting on their stuff, always keeping it positive. Don't be pushy and jump into people's DMs saying, hey, where are the train yards at? That's just like, you just don't want to do that. Most people are not going to be receptive to that. But if you're constantly, consistently showing up in people's posts and giving them props and, and, uh, creating positive, positive experiences for them and supporting them, there's likely going to come a time when they start engaging back with you. They start seeing your name popping up. They'll start get engaging with you. You could start getting a rapport with them. And that's a way you could start forming relationships in this sort of internet age by providing value to people. In addition to that, when you're commenting on these posts or liking these posts, I would also go into the comment section and engage with the people commenting. So if somebody makes a comment that resonates with you, like and reply to that comment. Now you're engaging with somebody else. Maybe check out that person's profile, follow them, start engaging with them. And don't be afraid to put in some effort, put in the work. This is something that you could do consistently to start getting your your name in front of people and start getting some back and forth conversation going. Once you start generating a rapport with somebody, it becomes a little bit easier to actually get into their DM and send them a message and maybe start asking them things. But even that, I would say, be very, very considerate. One, be considerate to the person you're asking. And and two, try not to ask uh, sensitive questions. So if you, if you say, hey, where did you paint that train? Or how do you get into this yard? Or do you know who this person is? And um, try to use common sense because there's, there's a lot of secrecy within the graph culture. And for good reason, if you think about it, if people are, are just giving out information on where yards are and how to get into certain spots and, and different information on different writers, you're, you're burning other writers, you're burning spots. You, You just don't generally give out that kind of information. So I would suggest not just jumping in and asking people sensitive things, but What you could do is after you've created some value on the person's page, then you could start DMing them and continue to provide that value. Like instead of asking somebody for something, 
you're you're giving. People are going to want to reciprocate that. So you're going to start forming a good rapport with a lot of different people if you're pretty active with this. The the other thing that you're going to gain from this is your following is going to grow. So you're going to start just by engaging with other people, you're you're getting people that are going to start looking at your profile so you can start growing your own following if that's something you're interested in doing. I would personally suggest if you're a graph writer and you're trying to do something like this to not do it from a private account that doesn't have any posts or something like that. You know, if you think about it, if, you, if you're getting somebody engaging with you from a private account and you can't really engage with uh, or you can't really check their stuff and kind of get a quick way of verifying that they're, I don't know how to say it, like not a cop or not somebody just creeping on their thing. So what I would do is I would make sure I had a pro- public profile. And if you're out doing, you know, street level stuff, then obviously be very careful on, on what you're going to post. So use common sense there. But at the same time, I would create a nice looking portfolio of your own work. So then that way, at least when they're seeing your name pop up, if they're going back to your profile and they just see a private account with no posts. I don't know. To me, it's it's kind of hard to engage with somebody like that. So I would suggest at least at bare minimum, get yourself a, a public profile that has some graph on it. I, I don't know. That's opinion. You can do whatever you want. But I think you're going to get better results if you actually have a graph profile that once you start doing this, people can actually look at it. Another thing you can do is, is, is share people's stuff. I, a lot of times I'll share... You don't have to put it on your timeline, but a lot of times it's real easy to share somebody's post on your story. So that's another way to provide value to other people and start getting getting a rapport going with people. So back to once you do get into the into the point where you think you, you might be able to DM somebody after you've provided some value and maybe they've replied to some of your comments, just take some time to think about the questions you're going to ask. Because if you think about it, if you ask them a super vague question, it's not something that's very easy to answer. They, they're going to, you know, it's not, it's, you want to try to make it convenient. So if you have a very specific question, like, Hey, I really like that effect. You got, um, you got any pointers on what kind of caps you use for that or something, something not sensitive, something not, not too hard to answer, you know, some, some stuff like that. And at the same time, don't don't be offended and automatically jump to like, oh, that dude doesn't give a fuck about the culture because he didn't answer my DM or he left me on red or any of that kind of just leave that shit out. Like that stuff doesn't matter. If somebody reads your your DM and doesn't reply, don't come back with like six question marks like two minutes later and shit like that. Nobody likes that shit. Like it's totally annoying. It's like if they don't reply, then just move on. Maybe send them another message in a couple of weeks or something, but just nobody owes you shit. So if they don't reply to your DM, even if they read it, it don't take offense to it because it, it, that shit just doesn't matter. So th- that can be used for new writers and also um, starting to get into a new city. It's, it's a good technique that you can use to start learning about your local graph culture and start actually forming some relationships where maybe you can actually start painting with people and, and building, you know, a real you know, real friendships with people and things like that. Um, and, and as far as for new writers, when I was coming up and for most of the people that I came up with, uh, having mentors was something that was not only very important, but it was, to me, it's a critical uh, piece of the, of the puzzle in terms of becoming a real writer. It's like a mentor is really going to teach you the ways of all the kind of ins and outs and, and a mentor that's familiar with the city that you're in. They're going to be able to tell you stories about things that you're not going to really find on the internet. So this strategy can also really help you find that mentor. If you start developing a rapport with somebody, that could turn into a mentorship kind of situation. So pretty much everything I said applies in, in the same way that you would approach this kind of situation. I would never just jump into someone's DM and, and ask them to mentor me or any of that kind of stuff if I was a new writer. But at the same time, if you do develop that rapport by providing value to somebody, then that could very easily turn into a mentorship kind of situation and just sort of let it let it evolve naturally and, and try to use common sense and in terms of 
if, if the person isn't really responding to you and you've commented a bunch of stuff, you could still keep commenting and st- I would still keep continuing that providing value. And maybe that'll end up turning into something. It, it, you you got to also consider that a lot of people just don't really pay a lot of attention to their social media. So a lot of people will post some shit and then, um, and then just not even really read the comments. Sometimes people will browse their, their DMS and, and just not really reply. I think Joe Rogan said something like his favorite thing to do is I think he called it posted and ghosted. Like he just posts something and he just fucking never looks at it again. I, I would say you have to really put in some work on this because a lot of times you're going to run into those kind of people. And, and you also, I would just go into it, consider and just assume that everybody that you're engaging with is incredibly busy. And then that way, if you don't ever get anything back, you know, the person's busy, they got other shit going on. They're not paying attention to their social media. It's got nothing to do with you. Just keep doing your thing. Keep putting, putting the value out there. Never be an asshole. Never be pushy. That fucking, I can't tell you how fucking annoying it is that follow up with a bunch of question marks. I mean, like if you're doing that shit, just stop. It's like, it's so fucking annoying. There was something else that I, I learned and and this will come from, if you do find a mentor and somebody does start giving you advice, there's something that somebody said that like, people have a tendency to like you more after they've helped you. It's kind of interesting and something that I'm going to look into it more. So if you want to get to that point where the person's actually offering up information, I would say there's no better way than jumping on and providing value and continue to provide value. And then if you do end up getting somebody that's willing to mentor you, be very mindful of that person's time and do everything you can to bring something to the table. Like you may be a new writer and and somehow you get lucky to to get this like 20 year uh, veteran in your city that's been crushing for 20 years. You may be fortunate enough to get that person as your mentor. And you may think, you know, I'm just a, a brand new writer. I'm a toy or whatever the whatever you whatever you think of yourself. You may not think you can provide value, but just really focus on trying to find ways to bring something to the table. I think that's all I got. But I, I think it could be a useful strategy for anybody even older writers that are trying to grow, grow the social media account or they're, they're just starting their social media journey. And um, I think it's a positive way to use a very, very powerful platform that, uh, that is definitely used for a lot of negativity, but it doesn't mean you have to use it for that. And these people that are posting negative shit all the time, I don't know. I got a feeling that uh, there's something else going on with their lives, you know? So like, anyway, I'm going to get out of here. So thanks for the support and uh, we will see you soon. All right. Good. Appreciate well, each and every one of you guys who are supporting the cause and, and continue to spread the love. And uh, yeah, stay up.